Hello. Oh. Works. All right. So, can you guys hear me now? Online students. Okay. So, I'm using my phone and the computer. Uh, we're going to just go ahead with the lecture. I'm going to see if I can because uh, it's echoing. Weird. Um, are you guys okay with the echoing? Okay. You say mute the computer? Yeah, but I'm going to say, I mean, I'm going to show you videos afterwards. Hello? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll mute myself later. Um, thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, the technician is coming and we'll just let them deal with it while we continue with the lecture. Okay. All right, so social power. Uh, this is the ability of a person to create conformity, compliance, or obedience even when the targets attempt to resist. So when you have social power, you can make people conform, comply, or even obey. So parents to their kids, they have social power. Uh, supervisor to employee, they have uh, social power as well. And now can you guys give me one or two examples who has social power over whom? Yeah. Teacher over students. Teacher over students. Yep. One more. Should be pretty simple. Yeah. I guess like a coach and then the team. Coach and the team. Very good. Very good. Uh, and there are plenty, like president to. Uh, citizens, uh, mayor to citizens, a lot, a lot of them, so. All right, so obedience, that's uh, changing your behavior in response to a demand from an authority figure. Uh, we kind of mentioned this uh, in part one of the lecture. Uh, so the only difference here is you need to have an authority uh, as a role. So question. Would a nurse inject a patient with a lethal, lethal dose of medicine if a doctor orders it? What do you guys think? Yes, right? No? You don't know? Yeah, some, I've seen some studies that would say yes, and others uh -huh. say no. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about this? Will people administer lethal electric, electrical shocks to innocent victims if a researcher orders it? I think we talked about this, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, will people shoot other people because an authority figure orders it? Yeah, yeah? very good, very good. This is a perfect example. Um, okay, so the Hoffling Hospital experiment back in 1966, uh, what they found is uh, there were 21 out of 22 nurses uh, finally followed the doctor's order. So specifically, they gave the patient an overdose of medicine, which is uh, 20 milligrams, even though the label states 10 milligrams is the maximum dose. So the, the label is very, very obvious on the bottle. They still gave the patient 20 milligrams. What's the pros and cons in this study? Yeah. Um, I don't think they actually gave the oh, patient that. Okay. Yeah, it's just an experiment. Uh, they, I don't know if they put salt, salt water or sugar water, uh, but they told the nurse to administer that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, would it kind of be the, oh, wait, one second. I didn't have, oh, that like a doctor could possibly know more about the medication? They didn't even ask. Do you think that's a problem? Yeah. Yeah. Good thoughts, though. It could be the nurse think that the doctor knows more, but 
you should still ask if the label specifically says that the maximum is 10 milligrams. What about this experiment design? Any cons? They only had 21, I mean 22 nurses. So, uh, and they only tested in one hospital, uh, maybe in one area. Do you know if it's the same with other areas? So, <coughs> the cons to this study is it's, n it's not really generalizable. We don't know if it's going to happen to a different hospital. We don't know if it's going to happen with different nurses. Right? So nowadays, it might be very different. This is, again, like 50, 60 years, wait, no, 70 years ago. So it's an old study. Um, so right now, uh, if they do a replication, it would be interesting to see. Do people still blindly obey? Yeah. It's worth noting too that nurses tend to be overworked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so there's an exhaustion component to that, um, the blindly following. Uh huh. So, do you think that's a con to the experiment design or the con of the working system? Like, I guess it could be a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, so, in my opinion, uh, it, might, it might be good to review that because uh, if you go to. Yeah. Hi. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a quick fix. If not, uh, maybe I'll just continue teaching because I'm using my phone right now. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Is it just that um, audio isn't working? Mm hmm And cause for some reason, I think they might have changed the setting. Usually, mm -hmm. the camera is right here, and now it's back there, and students can't hear me. Okay. Yeah. Got. Gotcha. Okay. Let me... Yeah, you can minimize, minimize that. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, the zoom is actually right here. I'm sharing oh. the screen. There it is. Okay. I actually tried all of them. You tried all these? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think this one matters. This one is like usually the instructor. Yeah, usually they see this camera instead of the... Yeah. The far camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there a USB port in there? Yeah, there's Okay. Okay. Oh, nice. It worked. Thank you. So it's this one. All right, I'm going to write these. No. All right, thank you. That's what I have to go up here. Uh-huh. That camera is now active. Oh, okay, nice. Yes. All right. And then they should now be able to hear you? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Because uh, that's on my other yeah. account, so. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't hear me, can you just type in the chat? Okay, great, great. Thank you so Perfect. much. Sure thing. Right. Apparently, just a uh, USB unplugged and didn't know it. So dumb. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about. The nurses are overworked. Oh, overworked. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think the study design, they can't really test that. However, they can use it as a third variable, like they measure how many hours they have worked and then use that to uh, analyze the, the results and see if that affects people. Um, but if people do overwork, uh, something needs to be changed because this is so important. It might kill someone, right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, good point. I didn't know that nurses are usually overworked. So. It's understaffing too. Under what? Understaffing. Oh, understaffing. Hospital, obviously, in the area, a richer area is going to have more. 
Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, nurses tend to work 18 hour shifts back mm. to back six or seven days a week. Yeah, see, that's, that's not good. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Hold on. What's going on? Wait, what? Okay, so this is the Milgram experiment. Um, what time is it? I don't know if we have enough time to watch the whole thing. Uh, you guys know about the Milgram study, right? And you read about it in the textbook. Okay, if you're interested in this, you can take a look at the video afterwards. Um, we, we had time, but because of the, the issue. Um, it's just in replication in today's society. Uh, so do you think people will still administer lethal shots to other people nowadays? Yes, right? Yeah, so this is replications. Uh, it shows that people still do it now. Um, maybe not as often, but the difference is not big enough. People still d obey to the authorities. And you can't hear it. Oh, yeah, I muted myself. Sorry. Hold on. Okay, uh, if you're interested, watch this. It's pretty funny too. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have much time to go over this. Okay, do you think that the Milgram experiment is generalizable, like in different cultures? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Why? Because I think you can look at other cultures and see. I mean, if anything, I feel like other cultures have more of a authority uh-huh so so when you're talking about that what kind of culture are you talking about specifically um, like Asian culture Asian culture uh-huh so uh, usually we we like to compare individualistic culture and the collective culture so here and what you were saying is correct uh, for people in collective culture so we call them collectivist they're more likely to conform and they're more likely to obey and we're going to talk about why in, in a moment but yes there there will be culture differences um, and it's generalizable sometimes some culture uh, might be uh, less obedient, uh, some cultures are not, but in general we find this uh, very common in a lot of cultures. Okay, so why do people obey orders? Why did those uh, students or participants who obey an authority and shock uh, an innocent people? Like a stranger, they don't, they don't even know them. And it's just an experiment. Can you take a guess why? Okay. They trust authority figures. Yeah, they might trust uh, the authority figures. Fear of getting in trouble. Mm. They can't really get into trouble because it's an experiment. And usually before the experiment, like the replication nowadays, they, they would tell participants they can leave without penalties. So that's uh, the standard. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say it's easier to just go along with it than it's to easier. go against. Yeah, it's easier. I was going to say it's easier to go along with like, automatic cognition you just automatically do something mm -hmm. rather than thinking about it. Yes, so in the first uh, couple of trials when the shock is lower voltage that might be the case. What about when it gets to higher voltage, yeah. like it's lethal? Especially when they start to be like... Yep, when they start to doubt, like, should I be doing this? And then they ask the authority, and when they insist that they should keep shocking the, the other person, and they still did it. Um, okay, wait, where did it go? Okay, 
because of time, we're gonna just go ahead. Perhaps it got a little bit easier too. Easier, like so when it gets to. If they had asked them to do the lethal shot from the beginning, would they have done the lethal shot just from the beginning? Mm-hmm. Build up. Yeah, so that's kind of like. It once, you're more likely to do it again. I agree. That's kind of like the foot in the door, right? Yeah. You yeah. start with smaller requests. Yeah. So lack of information. They, they don't know what's going on, so they trust the authority figures. And the lack of personal responsibility. Uh, they can't say, yeah, the authority told me to do it when people shoot other people. No, I was just following orders. You heard that a lot, right? It's the lack of personal responsibility. Okay, so here are some of the factors that decrease uh, obedience. Uh, when the prestige and the status of the authority uh, is not as high, uh, people are less likely to obey or blindly obey orders. The presence of others who disobey. And we notice this when we look at the um, ASH study uh, about the lines. When there's another person who disagree with the uh, group, uh, also, uh, they disagree with the authority, uh, more people will disobey. And then the proximity of the victim. If you know the other person, uh, you don't need to be friends with them, you just need to know them, know their names, their story, and you're less likely to blindly obey orders. And lastly, we have personality characteristics. Do you guys remember what the book uh, talks about? Like what kind of personality characteristics are related to obeying orders? Uh, can you say that? Can, can you expand that? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, and I think they use a different terms here. So we have authoritarianism, and that's the tendency to prefer things to be simple rather than complex. Um, we have conscien conscientiousness, that's the tendency to be responsible, orderly, and dependable. And we have agreeableness, that's the tendency to be a good natured. Uh, cooperative and trusting person and if you're high on those personality you're more likely to obey however uh, when you have moral reasoning and that's the manner in which one makes eth ethical judgments and social intelligence which is an ability to develop a clear perception of the situation using situation cues you're less likely to obey and you don't need to write that down, it's all in the, in the PowerPoint. You can go back and note that. And also, also it's in your textbook, so I didn't put it here. Okay, so do you guys know the Stanford Prison Study or the Zim Zimbardo experiment? Okay, cool. If you haven't watched the video, I mean the, the movie, they made a movie out of this. It's pretty cool. Uh, you, can, you can watch that and you can click the link here it leads you to a whole website that talks about this experiment. Um, you guys all know about this, right? If you don't know... Okay, all right, cool. I'm not gonna spend time on this then. If you don't know and you didn't want to raise your hand, just read about it or watch the movie. It's pretty fun. Okay, any questions so far about obedience? We good? <coughs> okay, all right, power. So we have five types of power. Uh, first we have the reward power, that's the ability to distribute positive outcomes. Can someone give me an example? What kind of people have, have um, reward power? Teachers. Teachers, very good. Uh, what kind of reward are we talking about here? Um, it sort of reminds me of like kindergarten teachers, so when mm, okay. students do well, we'll give them a sticker. Yeah, 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 and extra credit, right? Very good. 
Coercive power, that's the ability to dispense punishments. Uh, who has that power? The boss. Boss, yep. Parents. Parents, yep. Yep. And teachers have that too. Usually when you have the reward power, you're, you're very likely to have the coercive power too. All right, next we have legitimate power. That's the power of those who are appointed or elected to positions of authority. Who has that kind of power? President. President. Yeah. What else? Kings. Say that again? Kings. Kings, yeah. Uh, teachers, right? mayors. What else? School presidents. Uh, a lot of them. Okay. Uh, and then we have reference power. That's the ability to influence others based on uh, identification with attraction to or respect for the power holder uh, who has reference power. Celebrities. Celebrities. Very good. Who else? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think they need to be aware of that, though. Sometimes they don't know that they have the power. Um, but very good. If you like someone, if you're attracted to someone, or you respect someone, uh, they have social power uh, over you. You might not even notice it, but very good. And then we have expert power. That's the ability to influence because of perceived uh, sometimes it's real, sometimes it's perceived. Superior skills and abilities. Who has that? What? Doctors. Doctors, very good. Yeah, doctors, instructors, uh, teachers, researchers, researchers coach, uh, and even con artists. Sometimes they might necessarily have the skills, but they they lied about it and they have the perceived superior skills okay all right um, okay so all those powers uh, they differ in resulting whether it's gonna be in public compliance or a private acceptance do you know the difference a public compliance versus a, a private acceptance no. So public compliance is more like you obey and you comply to it, but you might necess necessarily agree with them. Uh, private acceptance is that from the bottom of your heart, you agree with this person. You, you want to follow this person. Does that make sense? So those powers differ. And can you take a guess which one of them results in more uh, public compliance and which one of them results more in uh, private acceptance. Yeah? Um, for public compliance would be legitimate power. Uh-huh. Uh, also coercive compliance. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes reward too. Yeah. Uh, you just want to get that reward. Yeah. Here we go. I was going to say for private acceptance, I think it would be reference power would be the largest. Yes. And expert power too. So very good. You guys have the correct answer. So this two has uh, would result more in private acceptance, and those three are more likely to result in public compliance. Okay, it's in the notes, so just making sure if you didn't write it down, you have it. All right, so differences in conformity. Uh, we have personal difference. For people who has lower self-esteem, uh, they have a greater need to belong, and they're more likely to conform. So they're more likely to follow. And middle-aged people uh, in their 40s and 50s, they're less likely to to conform than younger or older people. 
Can you take a guess why? Why do middle-aged people are more independent? Establish in terms of like in terms of in terms of status status, of but also in terms of like their personality. Like younger ah. people are still building their personality, so as they're building, it's very mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So so they have more money. They have more ability to have a say in decisions, right? Okay, uh, and their personality, they're more developed. They know who they are by the time uh, when they get to forty and some fifties. They know who they are, uh, they're more likely to stick with their, um, their personality. Yeah. Very good, very good. That will be my hypothesis too. Yep. Why would older people like in their 70s that they like would conform more? That so that's my hypothesis, is that older people, they don't have as much information as younger people. Like sometimes they don't know, they're not updated. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know if you uh, notice, a lot of older people are more likely to fall into those scams. Um, so it's just they don't have the information. And sometimes uh, we know that people after 25, um, your cognition, uh, your senses, they all start to de degrade. So when you get to 60s, 70s, your cognition is not going to be as good. You might not think as fast. Uh, it might be easier to just like, okay, and it might be uh, less likely for them to to argue. Yep. All right. Very good, very good. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, when you are young, you rely on older people for more adult information, and elderly people rely on younger people for new, younger information. Yeah, I agree. Uh, younger people are more <laughs> ignorant about the world. Yeah, but if they're more ignorant, I feel like they're less likely to comply, right? It can be both. It can be both. It can be both. <laughs> can you guys read this? Interesting. It's like so small to me. I mm -hmm. amazing. You can you can read that. Young people, I'm getting old. I think it's the angle you're at too, because you're so okay. close up to it and sort of okay. the side while we're facing it head on. Gotcha. That makes sense. Well, I'm, I'm still reading everything because I thought you guys can't read it. Well, if you guys you can read it, I, I might not just repeat that. And contacts right. also help. Huh? Contacts also help. Contacts helps. Yeah, I wear contacts when I when I do sports, but it's too dry. All right, gender difference. Uh, men are less likely to conform than women in public. Why? Like we know, if you read the book, we know that. Um, Men and women, they're not very different in conformity deep down. But in public, men are less likely to conform. Why? Yeah? I think women tend to care a lot more about what people think of them like mm -hmm. in a public situation. Wait, so are you saying people care more about how other people think about you or how do people think? Um, I'm confused. Like, um, I mean, like, I think that, like, in public, like, women care more about, like, what people think of them or, like, how people see them than the guy would. See them as other people or see women? Like, let's say, uh, would you care about how I think about you or how I think about myself? Like, how you would think about me. Okay, okay, okay. And then you're more likely to conform? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Because uh, 
if you disagree with most people, you might break norms, and people might think, oh, what, what is she doing, right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. What else? Expand that. Um, women are, well, I mean, the, to take it to the extreme, women are to sit still, be quiet, look pretty. That's the extreme, if you will, of it. Uh -huh. Men are expected to talk more, be upfront, more, I wouldn't okay. say aggressive, but like. Assertive. Like, so, uh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah. To take it to the extreme. Yeah. The extreme. Yeah, so it's, it's interesting. Sometimes when. A man and a woman has the same behavior. Some people will describe the man as being assertive, but the woman be aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I know you're looking for the word. Um, do you think that's a problem? I mean, yeah. Yeah. If they're similar in conformity in private, but not in public, it's obviously affecting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, also, I think it's unfair if... That's why we see a lot of men leaders. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, you know, when men leaders, they, they're being aggressive. People kind of like that. They're like, yeah, this person is being assertive. But when the women are being kind of aggressive, uh, people will be like, She's a bitch, right? I mean, a lot of times people would yeah. do that. I've She's seen so it a rude. lot recently online too. There's been mm -hmm. a lot of like videos of um, women on like Zoom calls with their, whether it's a class or a, in their workplace, and mm -hmm. um, they'll start talking and then the men will start speaking over her. Uh. And <laughs> she has to like fight to get the conversation back from yeah. the simple point she was making. And then another person will, like a man will repeat the exact same thing that she said. Uh -huh. And then they'll give him the credit for it. Yeah. So, and it's like still happening. Like this is being posted every day. Uh huh. I think that's interesting. I heard about that too. Uh, yeah. Personally, I haven't had the experience yet. Uh, but also, maybe uh, I've been in college for so many years. And, you know, people in college, they have more education. Um, and people might know how to behave better, I guess. Uh, I was just surprised because I've seen it in classes too. Oh, really? A girl trying to make a point in the uh -huh. class, if the teacher asks a question and the girl speaks up, uh -huh. and then men in the, in the class start speaking over her. Okay. Um, so, mm. yeah, I mean, it's still prevalent, like, even in college. Now, especially with Zoom meetings where uh -huh. you can't necessarily stand their ground in person. Mm. It's harder, especially when Zoom only does one voice at a time. You can actually unmute when other people are unmute too. True. Yep. Uh, yeah, I agree, uh, especially for <laughs> math or engineering majors, a lot of older professors, they have very strong gender stereotypes. They, they prefer men than women. Uh, they might not even notice that. Uh, I hope I, I'm not doing this. I'm not like giving credit to men. No, I haven't students. seen it okay. in any of my particular classes, but I okay. have seen the videos go online, especially right. Especially in STEM classes mm -hmm. or Yeah. Yeah, so that's something that uh, it's very important. But if people are aware of that, uh, people are less likely to, to do this kind of behavior. Uh, very good, very good. So, according to some research, it's that men, they want more face. They, they want to seem like they're independent. They can make their own decision. That's why they are less likely to conform. And women want less uh, disagreement. Uh, women, they just, uh, I don't want to say in nature, uh, sometimes it's social norms. They care about others more. Uh, that's why I asked you, uh, I was thinking they care about other people's thoughts. Like they want to make sure they're not uh, like confronting or hurting other people's feelings. So they're more likely to just go along with it, whatever one's doing. So, but also it makes sense. They care about how other people think of them. All right. Cool.
Culture differences. Collectivists are more likely to conform or obey uh, than individualists. Uh, can you think of any pros and cons to this? Like pros and cons being collectivist or individualist. Yeah. Like sometimes it's good to just obey, like with maps, mm -hmm. but then it's not always good to blindly obey because you have to like think about whether what you're being told to do or not is a good thing. Yeah, very good, very good. So like in a pandemic, uh, if you just obey, it, it will be over very soon, right? Everything will be and like right like that. Uh, right now in China, people don't even need to wear masks when they go outside. Uh, they just resume normal activities. Uh, and we are still wearing masks uh, because a lot of people, they just don't care. And the uh, cases are increasing. Like the football game. We had a football game. I don't know how many people attended, but it seems like um, it's in person. and. It just increased the likelihood of getting affected. And if people can just obey and then everyone stay at home for two weeks, because it's 14 days, right? Uh, it would be much better. The pros, however, for being individualist is you guys have more voices. Uh, if you wanna chip in. That'd be great. Like you're more diverse, yeah. Uh, like, um, I think of it more like terms like government, like uh -huh. and more like authoritarian regimes. Like you should not always just. I mean, not everyone has a choice to not blindly conform, mm -hmm. but um, then it can be dangerous if you're just always listening. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can't have more uh, discussions, right? Uh, Overall, I think it's good to have both. Um, but I sometimes hear uh, in my meeting on Monday, I think, some students, they complain about the mask. And not this class, uh, we have a different meeting. Um, they are like, look at those collectivists. They're so good, they just obey. I was like, yeah, in special situations. But sometimes it's not good. Do you guys have any thoughts about about cultural differences in conformity? Or any questions? You good? Alright, so if you don't have any questions, that will be it. Uh, and the reminder is that we don't have class on Friday. And please use the time to work on your group project. And do your quiz. That's it.